very much. Um, lovely to be here. Can, can you hear me? Um, it's OK, is it? Can everybody else? Can, can everyone hear me? That's good. Um, lovely to be here. Um, I've been asked to talk about carers and their rights, and I'm very happy to take questions. Um, it's always problematical when you take questions, because half the people want to ask a question, half the other people don't want anybody to ask questions, they want somebody to talk. So it's a difficult thing, but I think it, it actually makes it much more interesting if we have discussion. Um, but sometimes, as, as Anne says, we may have to sort of park it um, if it gets too involved. But please do interject. It's also quite a long period. We're going to have sort of um, just over two hours. So if you feel like standing up, stretching your legs and going for a stroll, please do. Um, I'm used to judges walking out whilst I'm addressing them or students <laughs> walking out. So, so I'm not phased by that. So, uh, please, please don't stand on ceremony. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, carers and their rights. And it's something that I'm really fascinated by. Uh, it's something I've spent well over 20 years being involved in. And uh, uh, I, I'm involved in it as a solicitor, as, as an academic. I teach uh, at a law school, as been said, but I also spend half my life as, still as a solicitor. I used to be a solicitor many years ago in Hereford, where I still live, um, just down, used to say down the road, but it's down the river at the moment. Uh, uh, and uh, spend lots of happy days suing local authorities uh, 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 and health boards. <laughs> Seldom Shropshire, I think, not in relation to community care, because I'm sure they're wonderful. But uh, so, so I, 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 I ride those two horses. Uh, what I wanted to do is to start off by looking at really the, the big picture and then the small picture, the macro and the micro. Um, Technically, I know as, probably as much as anybody does, and it's only because it's a very small area of law, about um, uh, carers and law, because actually I've been involved in drafting some of it. But also, each year for Carers UK, we write a, a book on this called Carers and Their Rights. And this one's coming out actually next week. And you can download that free from the internet. It's about 110 pages or something like that. And, 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 and you, can, you can get it from my website or just Google it and you'll get that. So that's a book that's full of all the detail of the law. It's free on the internet. I think there's going to be a, 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 a web, oh, some clever sort of e-book or something that's free. And it's got the sort of technical detail that the devil is, uh, of the detail if you need to know stuff about flexible working or or rights specifically um, on, on access to information or parent carers or young carers or adult carers. But I'm going to rake through that briefly today, but that's there. Um, I've also got a newsletter which I've put over there, which has got um, stuff. I, I write a very big book, which, which you certainly shouldn't buy. Um, uh, which is the sort of book the courts use and uh, your, the lawyers use on community care. But inside there's a copy of that carer's book, which is free. And there's also a book we do, which is quite a big book, called Disabled Children, if you're involved in that area. Um, education, social care, health care, transitions, uh, capacity, which is also free on the internet. So you can download that as well. Um, so that's the detailed stuff, and that's got lots of footnotes to sort of court cases and ombudsman's cases and, and, and bits of statute. I really want to start with the big picture because I think the big picture is, is fascinating and it's not as bleak as the small picture. Um, and it's what we um, in academia really, I suppose, call the policy memory. Um, and it, it, it requires you to be sort of old like me, um, to, to have a long enough period of being involved in this to see things coming around again um, uh, that, that were around before. We, we, we are in a living in a difficult period, no, no doubt about it. The UK has... Um, 
It has um, a net structural debt of about 60% of our gross domestic product. Um, so what does that mean? Well, it means it's big. Um, uh, and we've never been in a situation ever like this before. Well, that's true if you're 21. Uh, but if you're a bit older than that, you realise that, of course, we have been in situations like this um, many times before. Uh, at the end of the Second World War, we didn't have a structural debt of 60% of GDP. We had a structural debt of 180% of GDP. It was three times worse than it is today. We also had um, three million houses destroyed and our industry was on its knees. Um, at that stage, we didn't slash and burn as a country. We didn't cut, 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 which is what is happening now. We did something quite different. We brought in some quite interesting legislation. We brought in a thing called the Education Act 1944, which brought free education not only just to primary school but to secondary education, which was an enormous leap forward. Shropshire County Council will spend half its budget on education. It's the single biggest thing it spends its money on. We brought in a thing called the National Insurance Act 1946, National insurance, um, pensions, um, contributory and non-contributory pensions for disabled people, ill people, maternity benefits, sickness benefits. Pensions are the biggest thing. I mean, the, uh, national insurance is the biggest thing that nice Mr. Osborne spends our money on each year. It's £270 billion, pounds, by far the biggest budget item. We spent, uh, we brought in a, a, a quaint little thing called the National Health Services Act, um, 1946. Free health care at the point of need. The NHS is the second most expensive thing um, the United Kingdom spends its money on, £110 billion. Pounds. Employs 1.4 million people, the third biggest organisation in the world. And over coffee we can discuss the other two. Um, and we brought in the thing called the National Assistance Act, which is um, uh, the act that places a duty on social services, county councils in this case, to provide social care for elderly or disabled people. And social care is the second biggest item of a county council's budget. We brought in the four most expensive things the UK does, um, nationally and locally at a time when our debt was three times worse than it is today. In fact, it rose to four times worse at the beginning of the 50s. And we did that because we had a very different attitude. We didn't elect, as we do in England, governments that don't believe in that sort of stuff. We, at the end of the Second World War, my parents did, although they deny ever voting for that government, but somebody must have voted for it. Um, uh, we had a belief in a very different world. We had a diff belief in a thing called a traditional welfare state. And we had that because um, we had an idea, a beverage, uh, Sir William Beveridge had the idea, um, or he developed an idea, um, that the state would be not just a war state fighting fascism, but when that was over, it would fight... It would be a big state, but it would fight evil, what he called the five giants, the giant of want, of ignorance, of disease. And we would slay these with the National Insurance Act, would slay the giant of disease. The Education Act would slay the giant of ignorance. And curiously, the giant of squalor would be, be slain by the National Assistance Act, the act I'm going to talk about, because it's the act that underpins social care. Um, uh, uh, and the idea behind the traditional welfare state is that it, it provides for everybody. Um, if, you, if you study the welfare state, you understand that it can only work properly if it provides for the middle classes, curiously. Um, it's, a, it's an expensive state, but it is um, a, a fairly open texture state. It doesn't have very complex rules because it is fairly generous. But it costs, um, and uh, that's a problem the English electorate seem to have a problem with. Now, somewhere along the line, somewhere in 1970s, 
we had a choice we could make. We could either go the modern welfare state way, develop our traditional welfare state into a modern welfare state, which is what really Northern Europe did, Sweden, Denmark, Finland, Germany. Or we could go the residual way, the way of the Americans and the Australians, where you have a state that just provides for the poor. If you do that, it's theoretically cheaper, but it has to have very, very complex rules to exclude everybody. So instead of giving a benefit like child benefit to everybody, you then start means testing it. And that's actually very complicated. Um, and we decided to go the residual way. And we have been going that way ever since. Um, cutting and cutting, um, particularly in social care. Social care is the one area, um, I mean, housing's gone pretty well completely in, in the public sector. But in social care, it's the one area that has been cut. And if you look at my newsletter, which I've got there, there's a very interesting graph in it, in the third page. And you'll see that there's two lines, one going down, one going up. And what that shows you is that in the last 20 years, the number of people getting help from social services has dropped every year. It's dropped dramatically in the last three or four years, but it was dropping ever since 1993. Now, that's very odd. You'd think that in the last 20 years, the number of people getting help from social services would increase because, of course, there's a lot of old, old people around. Um, when the welfare state was formed, old people did the decent thing. They died um, uh, when they got to 60, but now they don't. They just sort of bleed us dry. They carry on living. Um, uh, and we're always told it's terrible. You know, we've got this awful problem they call the demographic time bomb. Um, so you'd expect, and we've got quite a lot of disabled children surviving that didn't used to survive because they were low birth weight, coming through with some disabilities. So the amount of morbidity in the population is actually increasing quite significantly. So you'd expect more people to get social care, but they don't. The number has dropped dramatically. And we'll see as I quickly go through that there are services they used to get that were routine, like housework, like holidays, actually. I just don't do those anymore. Um, so we've abolished, we, 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 we are cutting services because social care is the one area that is on its knees. Massively short of money. So, so what's happening? Well, of course, the answer is what's happening is that these elderly ill people, these people with dementia, these people with profound learning disabilities, are not being left on the streets. They're being looked after, but they're not being looked after by the state. They're being looked after by carers. 